Hey guys, I have a fun little video to present to you, uh, an herb to present to you. Um, this is wild mallow, and I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this. It grows all over the place and it's pretty wild. Uh, very beautiful day today, so I thought I'd take this opportunity to come out and talk a little bit about this wild edible. That's exactly what it is, a nutritious wild edible. Um, it's Latin, its name is Malva neglecta. It is a wild mallow. Um, see these little fruiting, the little fruits. They look like little pinwheel, cheese wheels. And then I'll tell you about that in a moment. So these little guys are edible. Everything on this plant is edible. This mallow plant is, everything's edible. The leaves are edible. Uh, you can put them in your salads and soups. They're very mu mucilaginous, so they'll thicken soups up like an okra. Um, they will vine out and grow everywhere. The tap roots are also edible. Uh, you can soak them in room temperature water and for a few hours and drink the, the water, which helps to, helps the stomach helps children also that are having trouble with their bowels. Also, um, the common names for this, let me not get too far ahead, the common names are um, cheese weed, and like I just showed you the little pinwheel that looks like a cheese, that's where it gets its name from. Uh, button weed, billy button, like uh, dwarf mallow, um, things like that, cheese plant. Trying to think of all of them. It's anti-inflammatory, diuretic. Uh, it's demulcent, emol emollient. It's expectorant. Um, it has like this really mucilaginous um, taste to it when you eat it. it. Helps to soothe the throat, especially these little guys. Uh, sore throats, which is you know the first sign of getting sick would be kind of like a sore throat. Um, you can make tea out of the leaves, dry them. These are gone by. We're in November now, like November 9th. I think today's the 9th. Um, so you still could collect some of these leaves. It's been really nice out. The little flowers also. You can make tea with the flowers. You can put them in salads. I'm surprised they still have some little flowers left here. <laughs> Here's a few of them. Here's a few little flowers. They're very pretty. Actually, you can eat the flowers. I'll eat one. They're very, hmm, actually really good. I don't normally eat the flowers on them, but they are good. You can eat the leaves. Mm, you can just chew. Well, that one looks like a bug. You can chew that one. The whole plant is medicinal and edible. It's a great staple food. You can put these in your salads. They look like little hearts, almost. I, I think it looks like a heart. Um, I'm going to eat that one. So... It has a deep tap root that spreads, so it is a perennial. It'll definitely come back. You'll never get it all. <laughs> it's just like dandelion. You think you've gotten a whole dandelion root, you're fooling yourself because parts of it will continue to stay in the earth and come back the following year. That's its uh, plan. So these guys um, put, make the leaves, put them in the leaves in salads, and if you cook them in a soup. You know, chop them all up, put them in a soup. They will uh, get thick, kind of like a gumbo type of stew soup. Um, the stems might be a little woody. We're getting towards these guys going dormant for the year, for the winter. Um, the stems, I think, are kind of woody-ish. You can steam them and eat them. I'm not sure. If you've... They're kind of tough and fibrous. But if you were hungry, you would eat them. Um, you, you can dry the leaves and like I said before, you can save them for your tea for the winter. Um, and I do know that it's rich in vitamin A and C. It does have calcium, magnesium, potassium, iron, selenium. There's probably more that I'm not saying, but from what I do know that this little medicinal plant has a lot of prop a lot of values a lot of uh, medicinal values and nutritious value that's why it's called a staple wild edible that's pretty and we still have bees pollinating it's amazing i just saw a bee pollinating hmm. um 
it is a substitute for those little capers. You could take these little guys. I think next year I might do another video on that and take these off. You pluck them all off and then you um, can pour pickle juice over them or you can pickle them and you know have them like little capers. They're kind of fun. I would do, oh, look at him. There's the bee pollinating. <laughs> so I could, oh, that one's a little crunchy with dirt on it. I would do this as a homeschool project even right now and you could do a little video on it or take pictures of some of your little recipes that you make with the kids. That, I think this would be fantastic because I know that if this is all around in my gardens, then it should be around your gardens. Um, it's very, I wouldn't say invasive because I hate to say that about any plant, but um, yeah, okay, you can stay right over there. <laughs> um, I would just do a little project on it, have the kids try eating the leaves, have them take these little they call them cheeses and another thing about these little cheeses they call them the in little doll houses kids used to play with them and put them on the table and stack them all in a little bowl and call them you know cheese um and just kind of play with them you know that was another thing that the kids did back in the day um other things are good for uh, they're called nutlets nutlets and U T L E. L-E-U-T-S. Um, it's great for stomach problems because it is mucilaginous. It coats the stomach, cleanses the liver, cures the um, blood poisoning. Great for urinary problems, rheumatism, heartburn, and cough. I mainly like this because of, again, the respiratory issues that we have. I'm going to just focus on him. And the roots were used to make poultices. And also ointments and salves and then you could use the poultice to put on any bee stings and here we go there's the bee um bee stings any wasp bites um spider bites anything you can think of um psoriasis it's soothing um there's a lot there's way more than what i'm probably telling you about this plant but this plant is known for um, a lot of medicinal uses uh is a great staple food like i said and um, they, it was used as a remedy for um, whooping cough and bronchitis uh, also because it's inf um, great for inflammation. People would soak the roots in cold water for like a half an hour and you just peel the bark off and then I, you could put it back in water again and you know um, put it back in water and then drink that water, drink the tea water and oh there's bees everywhere here. So. This is a fun little um, project you can do with the kids. So get out there now. You've got at least another week of this beautiful weather and uh, try to um, make something with them. Pick these little cheeses, <laughs> cheese wheels. I think that's what they're calling them, cheese wheels or, yeah. Can you see them? Let me try to focus right in there. My phone's not focusing very well, but. If you go out and you'll see these little guys, this one fell off. You see these little guys, you can definitely try to pick them and make a little concoction with them with the kids. It's always fun. It's safe. They're they're edible. You can just pick them and eat them just the way they are. You don't have to pickle them or anything. But that's it. I just wanted to get this little video out before winter really does hit and we don't have them anymore to look at until spring. So now come springtime, you should be able to tell what these are. Wild mallow. There's other names. I like the wild mallow. It's easier to pronounce and say. Latin names always get me. I get tongue-tied, twisted. All right. Be well all. Peace.